Today is a very, very dark day in world history, in American history. It is a dark day for freedom. It is a dark day for your liberty. And it is a dark day for the internet. And I tweeted this earlier. This is the final nail in the, co in the coffin, so to speak, on internet freedom, free press, and the truth getting out to the American people and those of you tuning in worldwide. Now, get this, regardless of what you think about this individual here, Julian Assange, whether or not he's a good guy or bad guy or he did something illegal or he works for an intelligence agency or he doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The point here should be what was put out to the public through WikiLeaks, this independent, true journalist organization, was the truth. And if it wasn't for this man here, we would never know. We would never have the factual, concrete evidence, for example, that the Democratic Party illegally rigged the election against Bernie Sanders because he was never intended to win. And you do not have a constitutional republic or a democracy here in the United States. You have an oligarchy. And if it wasn't for this man, Donald Trump would have never been elected because he wasn't supposed to. And the deep state has and has always been working against real truth seekers, real presidential candidates. And yes, I know Trump's a billionaire, but really he's small beans compared to the trillionaire family, those, those really in control, those that are doing everything in their power right now in the UK to quell, maybe that's symbolic there, truth and freedom. So this man, I was shocked. I woke up this morning. I was shocked, not that it was Julian Assange. I was shocked it wasn't Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton because I was expecting to see them being dragged out by their collars, handcuffed into a moving police escort vehicle, and jailed and indicted for their crimes. We know for a fact that the Democratic primary was rigged. We know, and the allegations are, Hillary Clinton was responsible for that. Her campaign was responsible for that. No one's even arguing that truth. We know that there's allegations that Barack Obama illegally wiretapped Donald J. Trump, spied on him and his family during, in, and around the election. Yet this guy's the guy in cuffs? For what? Leaking the truth. Was it not George Orwell who said that in a time of deceit, it would be a revolutionary act to tell the truth? And again, with all these internet controls, these social controls, a social credit system, the too big to fail bankers raping all of you, just like what they did in 2008-09, they are moving to something so far more sinister, so much worse than anything you've ever seen before. And honestly, this pains my heart because I know that this is the death nail so to speak, for everything I just described. Unless we build something new. I wanted to point this out, this book here. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm sure we'll find out in the coming hours who this is. At first I thought maybe it was like a director, the one that had interviewed him. I mean, by the way, has he not already been tortured? He's been holed up in the Ecuadorian prison, so to speak, the embassy, for seven years already. He's haggard, he has health problems, he hasn't been allowed to get proper medical attention. He, he, this is probably the first time he's even felt sunlight on his face. But I want, I want you to think about this for a minute. Yet all these people in America that have committed these crimes, right, even admitting now, like I saw this on CNBC earlier, for example, and I've told you guys this, by the way, they're never going to raise interest rates, they're never going to stop the bailouts, they're never going to stop any of this. This guy's the focus for some reason. Now, I do want to say, don't underestimate what's happening here. A lot of people are blaming Donald Trump. I actually think Donald Trump might pardon Julian Assange. I think they might even actually been, be using this as a show, so to speak, right now, almost like a Hollywood type event where they, they bring him out. I mean, look at the public reaction. If you look at the video comments, people love Julian Assange. And they love Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump were to pardon, say, Julian Assange, it might even secure his re-election. If it wasn't for this guy, he wouldn't even probably be in office, which is exactly why the deep state has to do everything they can to shut him up. And it's why we've seen this domino effect in this orchestrated silencing across platforms and across social media 
and across just the internet at large in recent months and over the last couple of years because they can never allow what happened in 2016 ever happen again. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President do you still love WikiLeaks? Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. And uh, I know there is something having to do with uh, Julian Assange. I've, I've been seeing what's happened with uh, Assange, and uh, that will be a determination, I would imagine, mostly by the Attorney General, who's doing an excellent job. So he'll be making a, a determination. I know nothing really about him. It's not my, it's not my deal in life. What would you like to see happen? What punishment? I don't, I don't really have any opinion. I know the Attorney General uh, will be involved in that, and he'll make a decision. Okay. They can't let a rogue person, an independent mind, actually get into office like Donald Trump. I mean, love him or hate him. I'm not saying he's perfect. They can't let that ever happen again. They don't want to see it happen in 2020. So this is absolutely terrible. And it's one of the reasons why I talk so much about decentralization. I talk about cryptocurrency. Not only is it an amazing opportunity, it's one of the few bright spots uh, you know, I teach it on a regular basis because if it wasn't for that tech, again, love him or hate him, I don't care if you like him, but WikiLeaks wouldn't even exist. Did you know that the too big to fail bankers cut all their funding a couple years ago? Wouldn't allow them to accept donations from his supporters because they just don't like them. You see, they don't like the truth. This is our Tiananmen moment, right? The images of Tank Man, which by the way, all that history has been rewritten where he's standing physically in front of a tank as the Chinese government is about to run him over. Now, this is our equivalent, but the fight is on the internet. So what do we do? I mean, even Pam Anderson, a Hollywood starlet Baywatch babe understands this. I mean, she's railing against the establishment. And how dare these supposed journalists, and it's not what they are, they're just teleprompter readers, how dare these people, not a single one of them, outside of maybe Glenn Greenwald, stand up for not Julian Assange, who even cares about Julian Assange, but not stand up for free press, not stand up for free speech, not stand up for the truth. Journalists are a disgrace in this country. And I've always said, people say, well, Christopher, you're not, you're, you're a journalist. I'm not a journalist. I'm a regular dude. I'm a media man with an opinion. I'm an American. I'm a patriot. I'm not a journalist. I look down on journalists. So this is a very dark day in history. And this could be teeing up and see how the UK is putting all these uh, internet controls and they're banning memes. I mean, they're scared of memes now. Dude, it's that crazy. They're scared. And I knew this when I started a channel like this 11 years ago. I knew that they would be absolutely terrified of people that could have influence of hundreds of millions of people around the world that weren't bought off and weren't state-sponsored. Like us here at AMTV. I mean, no wonder they're so fearful. I mean, CNN, dude, they can't even get like a million viewers. The only place you can even find CNN is retirement homes where people are dying or at airports. That's it, maybe government buildings not the ones Trump's in. So Assange beaten, battered, disgraced, reviled, hated, libeled, defamed. I'm surprised this guy's even alive. Who even cares who he allegedly works for? Right, and there's so, there's so much here. It's a multi-layered, multi-faceted thing. I mean, I could go on for hours. I could do a documentary on it. I mean, look, I'm not, this guy is a part of an intelligence agency. I think that's pretty obvious, but I don't really need to debate who he or who he doesn't work for. It doesn't matter because it's the underlying truth that should matter. Again, if this guy's been being treated like an animal, why are these other people that I just mentioned allowed to walk around scot-free? I mean, some of these people even have the gall to not only promote bailouts and these kinds of things, but now they're considering running for president. Like Jamie Dimon, that's what he said. He was like actually considering it. 
This is like the equivalent of an American psycho, the movie, pretending to be a normal person as he shows up to his business meetings during the day, and then when he's at his home late at night, he's murdering people in the back. Again, why do things need to be censored? Why? Why is the truth so dangerous? Why is my screen freaking dark now? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the only people that should be in jail are the NSA and all these spying agencies and the cartel that is illegally and criminally wiretapping your freaking cell phone, wiretapping you tuning in, listening to your wife sing in the shower while you guys make love or take a shit. Excuse my French. That sounds criminal to me, but not so much as a peep, right? Because they got to normalize this. And this is what you need to understand. It ain't that symbolic. The thing, darn thing doesn't even work. Ain't it symbolic that as they move forward with this agenda, Agenda 21, New World Order, Internet Controls, World War, culling of the general population, get everyone off so they're you know, rural, rural areas so they can't depend on themselves, but they're dependent on a centralized government power. I mean, did you know, for example, the Brave New World, Aldous Huxley's very, very prevalent, famous book? It's not even a fiction, man. That was the truth. He put it out as fiction so he could get it out there. That was basically the blueprint for how they intended the world to look like in the future. And see, this is what pisses me off. I know. I have to go to sleep at night. It's tough to sleep sometimes, man. I, I got to pray for greater understanding and, and truth and knowledge as an intellectual and as a student and as a public speaker and all these kinds of things because I know how bad it's going to be. I know what the elites have planned for you tuning in. Like, you do realize 2008 and 2009, that was just the beginning of the wealth transfer and the culling of the general pop. There's so much more that I could say about this story, but as I tweeted this morning, you need to focus on the things that you can control. Okay, what good does it do to know that this stuff is coming, to know that these challenges are ahead? If you're not doing anything to pivot, to better your life, to better yourself, to better your family, to put yourself in a positive frame of mind, to understand that this is going to be really bad. Now, for example, the Too Big to Fail banks cut all of this guy's funding in recent years. They weaponized currency and the U.S. dollar against him to shut him up so that he couldn't speak. And one of the reasons I keep advocating decentralization, blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, and all these things, is because not only is it an incredible opportunity where there's millions, billions, trillions to be made, but did you know, for example, utilizing a decentralized blockchain internet, anything this guy publishes never goes down and never, it's never corrupted and it never comes off the web because that's what that technology does. And it's why the elites fear it so much and it's why it's the future, and it's why there's an attempt to co-opt a truthful, organic tech, which people like me have worked on the open source code. I'm a part of it, as many of you tuning in. So let's move on and let me tell you about some other major developments in just the last day or two. Coinbase, the largest exchange, one of them, most well-known in the world for cryptocurrency and blockchain assets with a $8 billion market capitalization. It has grown into an $8 billion company since we started Bitcoin Rich. And I started talking about cryptocurrencies, learning about them, investing in them, and then, of course, we've been traveling all over the place, espousing what an amazing new tech this is. Coinbase is now worth $8 billion. And just yesterday, they announced... They're partnering with Visa, I'm sure you've heard of them before, and are now making Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, XRP, Litecoin, and other payments a reality using a credit or debit card. So I don't have to show you that on my wallet, but like, I constantly hear from people, they're like, 
Well, this will never be mainstream adopted, Christopher, because I can't buy a cup of coffee. Visa is doing it now. Visa is partnering with Coinbase. Do you understand why thousands of my students, students, not all of them, it's not a guarantee of return, have become millionaires and many more will become millionaires as a result of these announcements? That when big tech moves in and it's exactly what they're doing now, there's going to be 5,000x plus rates of return in some cases. Because it's all mainlining and it's all mainstreaming. Bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum, Ripple's XRP and Litecoin, have long struggled against accusations they are harder to spend and use in the real world than their traditional fiat counterparts. The Bitcoin price, which leaped higher last week to trade around 5,000 per Bitcoin, has been called too unstable by the pundits and volatile to be used as a means of payment. But now they're using it as a means of payment. So my point is, I'm not going to get into all of it, but this is all mainlining. In fact, my next video at BitcoinRich.com, by the way, we're closing new entrants and new registrants today. So get in, click the link below. I've got some great new content there. I've shot countless videos on where I think the opportunities are. I teach you everything you need to know from the fundamentals all the way to advanced topics. Click the link below, join us. I'll be making a private announcement to all of my students where I think the next potential 1,000x rates of return are. And I'm also going to drop a freaking bomb on which company I think which of the big tech giant elites I think are making the next move. And again, you're going to wake up and it's going to happen in the very near future and there's going to be an announcement that guess what? Facebook is utilizing Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to jump through the roof and it's going to happen. But Christopher, it's all digital. Of course everything's digital. What's not digital? Everything in your wallet's digital. This is digital. Amazon is digital. Jeff Bezos is digital. The entire world is freaking digital. The President of the United States speaks to you through digital. Everything's digital. And it's a mainstream event. Here I have a corroborating report. Cryptocurrency startup Coinbase valued at $8 billion. This is just the beginning. I mean, we're talking multi-trillions of dollars here in the not-too-distant future. And in my course, I'm going to review some major updates because there's been a lot of new additions, a lot of new coins, and there's a ton of them. And I basically pinpoint and this isn't investment advice, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not giving you, telling you you're going to make money or anything like that. I'm, it's purely education. But I basically point out with laser precision, this is the opportunity, in my opinion. This is where the explosive results are going to come from. And the only people in the world that get it are my students at our school. Built, by the way, on a decentralized, distributed network. So it can't be censored and it can't be controlled. So much opportunity, so much change. And the point is, some of you would say, well, like, how does this tie in? This ties into everything. It's so big, Facebook just announced they're seeking $1 billion in funding for a new crypto project. People said it was a conspiracy theory before. Now it's just wide out in the open, baby. A billion dollars they're seeking for investment, and everything we've been talking about here at AMTV and BitcoinRich.com and beating over your freaking heads. Because they're trying to compete with the Assanges of the world. They're trying to compete with the Bitcoins of the world because it's taking over. Case in point, the most subscribed YouTuber in the world, PewDiePie, PewDiePie just made a deal with a major blockchain live streaming platform and he is ditching the oligopolies that control his freedom of speech. Do you understand how big this is? Everybody smart is moving to the blockchain. Every single person, all the early adopters, just like the internet, just like social media. This is the biggest thing to happen in our lifetime and it ties into this guy right here whom they want to shut up, who they want to quell. It ties into free press. It ties into free speech. It ties into your liberty. It ties into information censorship. I mean, look, what do you do when they're creating a society where they're going to continue widening the wealth gap, they're never going to stop the bailouts, and interest rates will never rise in your lifetime again, ever, until maybe like the next world war when a few billion people get eradicated off the earth? Well, you pivot and you get involved in the new opportunities to profit 
so you're not left destitute, dying and dead on the sidelines when the next wave hits. You know, how many critics and cynics out there said that the internet would never last, or said that social media would never last, or said that reality TV would never last, and now it's the entire global economy? Pretty much everyone, because the masses, newsflash, are the last people to get involved. You know, it's only really the few select people that get in early because they always have that first mover advantage that participate, that ride the wave, that benefit, and more importantly, profit from all the events that we know are coming. So I'm going to close you with this, and I want to hear your thoughts about Assange. I want to hear your thoughts about these recent cryptocurrency and blockchain developments. More importantly, I'm closing down new registrants to our school. This is your last opportunity today to get in. Click the link below right now or visit BitcoinRich.com. Get it now. This content will blow you away. Like I said, I already have dozens and dozens of videos, over 15 plus hours produced, interviews all over the world, hedge fund managers, technological titans like Steve Wozniak and others, and 1,000x picks. I've got a new one coming. I'm doing a major revision platform. It's why I'm closing it down, and it's your last chance to get in. Click the link below. Join BitcoinRich.com today. Get involved. Understand the future of this technology. Understand how we, the people, are fighting back against the machine. How we're fighting back against this tyranny, against this censorship, against all of this on your behalf, and we're building a better future. Again, all day you can sit in the negativity of understanding, yes, free speech is dead, or you can try to help us build something new. Or you can do that. And what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to learn something new. Maybe you'll make your first million dollars with us too. Or maybe not. It's completely up to you. So this is your moment. Just like this is Julian Assange's moment today. Are you going to wait and do nothing and allow yourself figuratively, maybe in reality, be dragged out into the street and thrown into jail by the financial elites that cripple free press, free speech, free currency, and all these kinds of things. You're just going to let it happen to yourself because you don't take action and you're sitting in fear in your own cynicism? Or do you take action? Do you actually stand up for yourself, learn something new, participate and ride the new wave of blockchain, cryptos, and do it with us at BitcoinRich.com? Build the future at our world class, the biggest and largest in the world, BitcoinRich.com. Again, I got some major new picks coming, major revisions to the platform, and it closes the day. It's your last opportunity. Click the link below. God bless. Thank you so much. And put your comments, questions in the box below, and make sure you share this video worldwide.